Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over 50 of the best gold farms to do. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay so today we're going to be going over 50 of the best gold farms so that being the said let's just jump into number one which is the Xenanthid farm. Now this one is located within Najatar and is definitely well worth your time in order to do. What you're going to be wanting to do is primarily have rank 3 at least in your herbalist and make your way over to Najatar. What you're going to be wanting to do is you can either pull up a route which is located within the worth it add-on if you have the roots add-on also with it. Being said, there are multiple different routes that you can primarily do, but the one I prefer to farm is the one that takes you all the way over to the eastern side of the actual part of Najatar, as this is where Xenanthid is quite heavily prevalent. However, the best way in order to get a lot of Xenanthid per hour is definitely using one of those routes. This will require you to at least have rank two or rank three on your herbalism character. This is primarily one of the ones in which I'll actually do and overall if you're going for a steady gold per hour for farming then Xenanthid is definitely well worth your time especially even in Shadowlands. That being said let's move on to our next one at number 2 which is the Worn Troll Dice Farm. This one is found in Horgoth's Landing and overall what you'll be wanting to do is make your way over to Ice Crown. This is because if you go over to the Argent Tournament and then just go north past the fatigue zone there is an island called Horgarth's Landing. What you're going to be wanting to do is bring a rogue. This is a rogue specific farm so only rogues can do this and you'll be wanting to pickpocket all of the Kafil deer which are in the actual zone. They have a chance of dropping the worn troll dice and the worn troll dice is a toy in which you can sell on the auction house. This is definitely well worth your time in order to do as it sells for a hefty chunk of gold overall. Not many people do this particular type of farm because it has a low drop chance in order to get a hold of. That being said, I would park a rogue there and I would do at least about an hour's worth of farming and overall you should really get a dice in about an hour to about two hours if you are unlucky. That being said, this dice farm is definitely well worth your time in order to do, but I wouldn't do multiple hours consecutively. I would just farm up one and then sell that on the auction house, and then when I sold that one, I would go back to that farm. Kind of those ones that you don't really want to farm endlessly. It's one of those ones where you will only do to just get your supply and then restock when in which you need it. This works hand in hand quite well, especially when you're farming other different types of materials or something to that effect and overall it's just a nice little farm which is a bit different than the standard farming in which most people like to genuinely farm. That being said let's move over to our next one at number three and that is the wind scales farm. This one is located within Shadow Moon Valley which is the Outland version and what you're going to be wanting to do is make your way over to the dragon hawks these these dragon hawks have a chance of dropping the wind scales which you can then sell on the auction house for a hefty amount of gold this is a skinning farm so you will want to of course bring your skinner along with you and overall this brings in a nice hefty amount of gold one thing you may want to consider is for this farm is the sell rate on these items are quite low so overall it may have a high gold per hour but you may want to double check your sell rate if you do want to do this because it takes a little bit more time to sell this material than most other materials so it is up to your own discretion in which you do this farm but overall I've found that this farm is quite reliable especially when getting a high gold per hour even if it does take a little bit of time to sell those things on the auction house overall this farm is definitely well worth your time in order to do in general is one of my most favorite and in general it's just a very nice farm in order to do overall. That being said let's move over to our next one at number four and this one is a new farm which is the Widow Bloom farm in Revendreth. What you'll be wanting to do is farming the bottom top part of Revendreth as this is where Widow Bloom is more frequent and overall what you'll be wanting to do is just gather up all of the Widow Bloom in that area. Granted you may want to run yourself as a tank spec as to not get dazed and that is due to the fact that there's quite a high density of mobs in that area which will daze you and knock you off your mount and that is kind of annoying but if you are willing to circumvent this by running as a tank spec you should have a load of gold and reliable materials 
very easily, especially ones that will sell, pretty much one of the fastest ones that sell. So overall, if you're going for a medium range gold per hour and you want something that sells fast and reliably, then Widow Bloom is definitely a farm in which you should be doing. That being said, let's move over to our next one and number five, which is Whiptail Farm in Alden. Now, the Alden Farm for Whiptail is pretty dead simple. I've talked about this a lot as this is my all-time favorite farm and that is because you'll be going over to Alden and following the river. There's not much else you need to do for this farm. You just need to follow this river and then follow it back round again. This is definitely a farm in which you should be doing a high sell rate for the materials that you actually get. You get whip tail and volatile life for, from this actual particular farm most frequently. And overall, both of those materials sell really fast in the grand scheme of things, even though it's a cataclysm based farm it still sells really well as it's used quite heavily to make the vial of the sands mount. And overall, you will tend to find high amounts of sales in the grand scheme of cata materials as this one is the most reliable for that. And the gold per hour for this is usually one of the best, especially for old world contents. Hence why I've put it at number five on this list before it gets a little long. That being said, let's jump over to our next one at number six, and that is the Volatile Water Farm, which is another Cataclysm farm, and that one is located in the Twilight Highlands. Now, the Twilight Highlands has the Volatile Water Farm. What you'll be wanting to do is go out, follow the river all the way down to the sea, and just before the sea, you'll find a load of water elementals, figured. And basically what you'll be wanting to do is gather up all of those mobs and burn them down. A high tendency to drop volatile water for your farm and overall you'll get a high gold per hour or got high gold yield for your time invested. I tend to find that this is one of my most favourite farms and that is because it has a very strong gold per hour. You can combine this with the Potion of Treasure Finding for additional loot for Cataclysm. And also you can increase the amounts that you actually get for the hour if you do it in a five man group. This is substantially more if you do this in a five man group. And overall, if you want to get fast sales as well as a high gold per hour, this is definitely the farm you should be doing as volatile water farming it's just reliable with the gold per hour as well as sell rate it's just overall one of the genuinely best gold farms that you should probably be doing that being said let's move over to number seven which is another high selling material and that is the vigil's torch within ardenweald this is a herbalism based farm and what you'll be wanting to do is go around the entire zone it's pretty easy in order to farm this one up as you're mainly sticking to the path for this route which works quite well as you will find a tendency to not get attacked by all of the mobs. Or I find this farm to be one of the best farms that you can do and it's if you want reliable gold and fast selling materials then this is the farm for you. This is primarily as there's less competition in Ardenwheel than there is in Revendreth and overall, I find that this one is the better of the two from Widow Bloom and Vigil's Torch. It's just overall a genuinely good farm if you want to pull in reliable gold. The gold per hour for this is substantially less than most other gold farms on this list. But overall, if you want reliable sales, current content is always king for reliable sales. Not always the best gold per hour. You just need to bear that one in mind. That being said, let's move over to our next one, which is a mage specific farm at number eight. And that is the Tome of Polymorph Porcupine. One is located within the Jade Forest. And what you'll be wanting to do is kill the Smoky Porcupines. If you are using a mage, of course, as it's a mage specific farm, you'll be wanting to take out all of those porcupines and you have a chance of getting a hold of the Tome of Polymorph Porcupine. This teaches a mage in order to turn something into a porcupine uh, when they use their polymorph ability. It's actually a pretty cool effect and overall it sells for a hefty chunk of gold. This is because the RNG bit of it dropping is quite low and overall I do tend, tend to get one per hour depending on my RNG of course everything is subject to RNG in the open world the majority of the time and overall 
if you do put in the time, the gold will be reflective of that time invested. Me, personally, I do find this to be one of my go-tos, especially for a keynote item to sell in the auction house, as I usually farm up for quality, not quantity. But overall, if you are wanting to go for something along those lines, this is definitely a farm you should be trying out. And especially the same with number nine, which is the Tome of Polymorph Polar Bear Cub. But this one is where you'll be wanting to go over to Dragon Blight with your mage and take out all of the grizzly bears or the Arctic grizzlies, if I correct myself there. And you'll be wanting to take out those for the Tome of Polymorph Polar Bear Cub. This tends to substantially go for more as the polar bears are quite scarce. So that means that there's less mobs to kill for that chance. And it's usually the same amount of drop rate, it's just the density of mob is a lot less. So hence why that one goes for a lot more gold. Providing that I would tend for this farm, for polar bear cub, I'd park a mage there, do a lap, and then just log out, do something else, then log back in, do another lap as the respawn timers are not instantaneous so i do this on a casual basis and when you get it it's a nice massive little uptick when you're actually doing this farm that being said let's move over to our next one at number 10 and that is the titanium ore farm in winter grasp this is definitely one of the ones that i would always recommend to people and that is because it's one of the most reliable as the items in which you actually get from this farm which is the majority of the eternals Titanium ore and also Saranite ore, those sell rather fast in the grand scheme of materials and even though it's a wrath based farm the sell rate is quite high for those materials as well as the gold per hour is. That's why I usually recommend it for anyone trying to get into gold farming but if you're a noob to gold farming this is usually my one that I will always recommend to someone even if they DM me I'm usually like this is definitely the one you should be doing if you are new to gold making and you just want to make a little bit of gold just to get yourself into the swing of things i'd always go to that one overall that being said let's move over to our next one at number 11 which is the stone hide leather farm now this one is making your way over to azuna and what you'll be wanting to do here is you'll be wanting to go over to the world quest of the falcosaurs this is where you'll be wanting to go to the north side the north left side of the actual map just before you go over to Val Shirar, and you'll find a load of falcosaurs on the shoreline. Here they have a pretty much an always amount of mobs they pretty much just hyper spawn and that is because it's a world quest it's used to having multiple people in that area killing those mobs consecutively. Now it's not farmed as heavily but if you are a skinner stone high leather is a key factor for you as these drop quite a lot of stone high leather especially if you get your ranks up this definitely gives you a high gold per hour for your time invested and overall the amount of stone high leather you'll get from this farm is just stupid now overall this does tell tend to sell rather fast even still today and Overall, if you are wanting to find a reliable farm for that, then this is definitely the farm I would suggest you do if you are a skinner. Being the case, let's jump over to our next one at number 12, which is the Starlight Rose Farm within Suramar. This one is definitely a farm for herbalists, and overall, if you are wanting to go for some high gold per hour, the sell rate is a little less on average than most other herbs even high-end ones that go for a lot of gold. Um, Starlight Rose tends to go for a decent chunk of gold, but not overly a high sell rate. So it will take you a little bit of time. I would do this mainly as an off-cast to see how it performs on your own server. So a little trial run for yourself if you are a gold farmer in general. But overall, I find that this to be a great way in order to make a load of gold. If you are wanting to put in the time to sell those on the auction house, especially with the time of sales. That being said, all of the routes for pretty much most of these farms that we've already covered are through Worth It, and this is no exception for the Starlight Rose Farm, which you can find underneath Herbalism uh, in Worth It for your routes and your expected gold per hour for your specific server. That being said, let's just jump over to our next one at number 13, which is the Sinvir Ore Farm for Revendreth. 
Now, this one can be paired as a multi-farm, which is typically what you should be really doing, is by running a miner and a herbalist. But if you just have a miner, no worries. Sinvir Ore is one of the highest gold per hour for the Shadowlands Ores. And this one is pretty much in the same-esque route as the widow bloom farm so you may want to run yourself as a tank spec as well to not get dazed but overall this is definitely a farm you should be doing if you want reliable sales and fast selling sales for a decent gold per hour not typically the best gold per hour but it has the far one of the fastest sell rates for you which can provide you with a lot of gold overall that being said i tend to find that this one is quite is one of the most reliable out of the Shadowlands farms, and that is why I've put it at number 13 on this list. Next coming in at number 14 is the Savage Leather Farm, and this one is located within the Firelands. What you'll be wanting to do here is take a Skinner and run into the Firelands raid. What you're gonna be wanting to do is only, and I mean only, take out the Turtles and the Scorpions at the beginning of the area. These tend to drop Savage Leather, especially for a Skinner, and they give you a lot of gold for Savage Leather, as for some reason, Savage Leather on average sells for a hefty chunk of gold for your time invested. What I'd recommend though with this, as it's a Cataclysm based farm, always Potion of Treasure Finding to increase your materials that you get, because the Potion of Treasure Finding will give you additional volatiles, ember silk cloth, and just a variety of different types of things for your time invested. So you're just increasing your gold per hour for farming. And with this farm, once you've taken out the, the scorpions and the turtles, just reset the instance by running out again or using Dreamwalk. Reset the instance, run back in and rinse and repeat until you're on a max of 10 lockouts. This is quite easy in order to do and the gold per hour for this is usually pretty dang high for just in general gold per hour farming. That being said, the sell rates for all of these for these materials that you'll be gathering for this farm is tends to sell really, really fast. And overall, I would put this as a, like a worth it recommendation for you to actually farm as this farm actually is not within worth it yet, but it is due to be added in the upcoming updates. That being said, this definitely is a farm in order to do if you are a Skinner. So that being said, let's move over to our next one, which is at number 15, which is the Royal Jelly Farm. This one will require you to be at least revered or have done the introductionary quest as an Alliance player. This is an Alliance only farm. And what you're going to be wanting to do is at least done the introductory quest with the Honeyback Hive. If you are wanting to increase your gold per hour, then definitely get to Revered with the Honeyback Hive, as this will be something you'll be wanting to do, as you can get goggles from the Reputation Vendor, which will be able to show the nodes on your mini-map, much like Mining and Herbalism. This makes it a hell of a lot easier farming up these royal jellies. And overall, I'm quite glad I actually did that back in BFA, but you can still do this even today. That being said, the gold per hour for this is usually typically on average, just insane. Um, that is because less people are farming this now. And overall, it's be mainly because it gets its value for that, not for the reputation that it provides when you turn in those jellies. It's mainly, for the unique mount of the Honeyback Harvester mount, which is a unique Bumblebee mount, which a lot of people usually go for. And overall, I love that mount. It looks so cool, it's so unique. I just hope Blizzard don't do a reskin of that particular mount. That being said, let's just jump over to our next one at number 16, which is the Primal Water Farm. Now, for the next few farms, we will see a tendency to all of this, but overall, this is Primal Water in Nagrand. This is an old school farm, and I generally stick with this farm ever since BC, and that is by going over to the Elemental Plateau. This is an old way in order to farm up, and what you're gonna be wanting to do is take a fishing character. What you're gonna be wanting to do is you're gonna be wanting to fish in the pools where the water elementals are. You can kill the water elementals for moats of water, but you'll get the best bang for your buck by fishing in the pools for moats of water, as you'll get more primal waters overall in an hour's worth of farming. 
However, this farm is definitely f for people if they just want to do it on a casual basis. Mainly with fishing, you don't really do all that much. You're just moving from node to node. And generally, if you are a person that doesn't want to do any active, like stupidly active farming, like skinning or something, this is definitely the farm for you as the gold per hour for this is usually typically quite high. The sell rate's quite good and it's just a reliable farm overall, especially if you're doing it with a fishing AFK type farm. Overall, I find this farm to be one of my favorite ones, especially if I don't feel like doing much on that particular day for gold making. So I would highly recommend you guys do it if you don't really want to put in a lot of effort for your gold making. That being said, that brings over to our next one for Primal Manor at number 17, which is a nether storm. This one is more of an active one as you'll be going over towards the village, which is just floating off the side of nether storm, and you'll be wanting to burn down all of the mobs in that area. These are usually arcane-esque spirit type things, and basically they're just recolored uh, void walkers, but Overall, what you're generally wanting to do is just burn those mobs down. They have a tendency to drop moats of mana, which you can then sell on the auction house for a lot of gold, especially when they're in primal mana form. And quite a lot, quite a lot of the time, this will tend to give you a hell of a lot of gold overall, as well as it can drop some nice world drop items for your time invested as well. So this can be paired as a nice little transmog slash recipe farm as well, but overall you're mainly going here for primal mana. Next one of note is another primal farm and at no surprise is at number 18, Primal Fire, which is located at the throne of Kil Jaden in Hellfire Peninsula. What you're gonna be wanting to do is take out the elementals, the fell elementals, and they have a chance of dropping moats of fire. In an hour's worth of farming, this is definitely one of the highest gold per hours for the primals overall for gold making. And if you are wanting to get one of the best gold per hours for this, then primal fire is your definite bet for this particular farm. It's also one of the most easiest farms as well as once you take out one area you want to go like left to right or right to left by killing all of the mobs then going back to the beginning again kill them all the way along because once you get to the end the ones that you started off with should have respawned that is brilliant as you've always got mobs to kill so you're always actively farming for these particular types of mobs so that will provide you with a lot of gold overall in the general sense that being said, let's move on to our last primal farm, as most primal farms sell for quite a lot of gold, and that is the primal air farm at number 19 in Shadow Moon Valley. What you're gonna be wanting to do here is take out the, of course, air elementals. Before we continue, consider supporting the channel by getting Dallas Guide to Gold Making, coming as either ebook or paperback on Amazon. This covers all aspects of gold making and how best to optimize yourself to make gold now and into the future. The link is in the description down below. Thank you, now back to the video. Which tend to go for a decent chunk of gold. I tend to find that this is one of my most reliable ones for gold making, as the Primal Air sells relatively well. Not as fast as Primal Fire, but it sells in a general sense of about the same as Whiptail's sell rate. But overall, the gold per hour for this is definitely well worth your time if you put in the time for that type of farm. The gold per hour for this is usually on average one of the best for primal far farming. And if you want to get a decent gold per hour for yourself, then primal air is your keynote farm. That being the case, we are finished with primals because of course they are one of the best. But let's move over to a different type of farm, and that is at number 20, which is the Poseidus farm. This is for the reigns of Poseidus farming in Vashir, and there are five spawn locations. There are four spawn locations within Shimmering Expanse for the Poseidus rare, in which you're actually farming, and there is one located in the Abyssal Depths when you're doing like the Azara's Veil farm or something to that effect. I primarily use a druid for this once I've done the introductory quest as this gives you the best movement speed to get around the area. So you, in general, I can do this in just under like five minutes to just gather to see if Poseidus is up. The respawn timer on this varies quite considerably, but on average it's about four hours. So what I do is I wake up in the morning and I casually farm this. 
I do one lap every four hours, so at nine o'clock, I find that this is when the rare is up the majority of the time. So I'll just log in at nine o'clock. If the rare's up, I get a free mount to sell on the auction house. And overall, it's just generally a brilliant casual farm. It's not one of those ones that you do endlessly. It's like log in, see if the rare's up. If not, log back out again and just do something else. But overall, it's definitely a great farm to pair with other different types of farms as it literally takes you five minutes to do, so it's just definitely a gold farm you should probably be doing. Other than that, that is pretty much everything I want to say for this particular type of farm, as it's just relatively easy. So let's just jump over to our next one at number 21, which is the Platinum Ore Farm in Tiragard Sound. What you're going to be wanting to do for this farm is make sure that you have your rank three in Platinum Ore, and pretty much all of the ores in Terra in BFA. Primarily, if you don't have that, you will uh, uh, by the time you've done an hour's worth of farming. But overall, Platinum Ore has actually gone up in value ever since BFA's finish and Shadowlands beginning. This is because less people are farming it, the supply is running out, and it's used in a load of different types of crafts which are even still used for today. This is where I would generally just go for this. And overall, with the resurgence of that material going up in value, it's made it a very key note farm again. And overall, I find that Terra Guard Sound is the best one for Platinum Ore farming, as well as it can be used as a multi-farm for like Star Moss and also River Bud as well. So you can use this as a multi-farm. That being said, let's move over to our next one at number 22, and that is the Phaedrium Ore Farm in Ardenweald. This can also be done as a multi-farm within Ardenweald with the Vigil's Torch. And overall, Phaedrium Ore sells generally not for the highest amount of gold, but for a reliable amount of gold. So, if you are wanting to go for something that goes for a moderately decent amount of gold per hour, with a high, high sell rate, Fader and More is your buddy right there. If you want to get fast sales, then current content is always king, and Fader and More is the thing you should be doing. That being said, however, that there's not much else to this farm, so let's just jump over to number 23, which is the Obsidian Ore Farm. What you'll be wanting to do is make your way over to Vashir and go all the way over to the Abyssal Depths. This is where you'll be taking a mining class. Primarily, I would take a Druid as a mining class for this. They have the fastest swim speed in the game, so that means that you'll be wanting to the faster you get around the area, the far more materials you'll get per hour, it just makes sense. But what you'll be wanting to do is do the introductionary crest for your enhanced breathing, as this gives you also an, an increase in your speed as well, as when you're in your travel form underwater, plus the extra swim speed, this actually stacks and makes you go super, super fast. So you'll be able to cover more ground even faster and f m mine more obsidian ore overall, which just increases your gold per hour overall for that. I'd highly recommend adding this with Dartmoor Firewater Potion as it just increases your gathering speed as well. Uh, and overall, it just makes you just a complete monster when you're farming obsidian ore. That being said, let's move over to our next one at number 24, which is another skinning farm. This is located within Shadowmoon Valley in Outland, and this is for the Nether Dragon Scales. Nether Dragon Scales sell pretty much the same as Wind Scales, but overall, Nether Dragon Scales tend to sell better than Wind Scales. This is because they are used to make some nice keynote items for Transmog, and a lot of Transmog farmers will just pay the the upfront fee for from the auction house instead of actively farming this stuff as they are quite expensive and they're a bit tedious to annoy as you need to take out those dragons which are flying in the sky or some are dotted around on the ground but primarily they're in the sky and this will drop you nether dragon scales which you can then sell on the auction house i find this to be one of my most fun farms it's not really one of the best farms for gold per hour for mob density but overall, it's just a fun farm in order to do. So just in general, if you're wanting to do an hour's worth of just fun, active farming, then this is definitely a farm you should probably check out. Even though the sell rate does take a, quite a while to sell these materials on the auction house, it's just one of those farms where if you want to do it, I would recommend doing it. 
That being said, let's move over to our next one at number 25, and that is another Shadowlands farm, which is Marrow Root. Now, Marrow Root is located within Maldraxxus, and this is a herbalism specific farm. What you're going to be wanting to do is you'll be wanting to just run around in a circle. <laughs> Basically, this is the most easiest uh, herbalism farm in Shadowlands. It also is one of the most highly valued for some reason, even though it's one of the easiest ones to farm. This is where you'll be running around in a circle within generally the center of the map and just herbalism all of the, and herbing all of the marrow root, which is in that area. This is definitely something that I would recommend doing as the current content is king, it has a high sell rate, it's got one of the best gold per hours, so pretty much there's no it's a no-brainer. If you want fast, reliable gold, then you're definitely wanting to do marrow root. Providing that there is a bit of competition with this, so double check before you actually invest like an hour on just farming the open world. But generally marrow root is pretty dang awesome, especially if you're an early riser like me who wakes up like stupid early in the morning. There's like no competition at that time, so I can just get in like a couple of hours worth of farming. I've got some fast, reliable gold, easy, easy gold for not a lot of time. And I can pretty much do it in a half asleep mode Overall, it's just one of the brilliant farms that give you just a great outcome for the time invested. That being said, let's move over to our next one at number 26, which is another rogue specific farm in Aldham, and that is the Loaded Gnomish Dice. What we wanted to do is go over towards the massive pillar esque thing in Aldham, which is in Bide of Aldham as well. This is where you would primarily go to buy your Pyrium laced vial as well as your sands of time for your vial of the sands craft and over here you'll find a load of packs of mobs in formation they're usually walking around the stairs and all that stuff but if you go to the pack leader and sap him all of the mobs will stand still this gives it a lot easier to in order to pickpocket all of these mobs as it's a rogue specific farm and you're trying to get a hold of the loaded gnomish dice to sell in the auction house in an hour's worth of farming, I find this one to be the most reliable out of all of the dice farms for getting a hold of that item. In general, because you there's just so many of those mobs, you just can pickpocket, pickpocket, pickpocket. The one keynote thing I would recommend is when you're actually doing this farm, I would highly recommend killing the mobs afterwards. This is because their respawn timers on their pockets is more, is longer than their respawn timer on their actual mobs. So I generally kill them after I pickpocket them to increase the amount I can pickpocket in an hour's worth of farming. I generally find that this is a great way in order to do this and you can put the potion of treasure finding on this if you want, but overall I generally do not as I don't feel it gives you that much of an uptick. Overall, it's definitely a farm worth checking out if you are wanting to find one-off items that are Pretty okay in RNG based, but you want a decent gold per hour for yourself to sell on the auction house. That being said, let's move over to our next one at number 27, which is the Heart Blossom Farm. It's located within Deep Home, and this one is a obviously a herbalism farm. You'll be wanting to fly around in a circle-esque fashion around Deep Home, and you'll be wanting to pick up a Heart Blossom as well as Cinder Bloom. This also comes along side to side with Volatile Life, and overall, it generally comes out to be one of the best gold per hours for cataclysm farming. The only thing is you're basically flying around in a circle so it just does come a little bit mundane after a while but the gold per hour and the sell rate is moderately good so overall if you just generally want a decent farm in order to do then the heart blossom farm is for you as there is literally no competition as hardly anyone goes to deep hole anymore so if you are wanting to get a have no competition and a decent gold per hour heart blossom is for you that being said let's move over to our next one at number 28 and that is the fox flower farm in high mountain granted you'll want to at least be ranked two in in fox flower or rank three at the bear at the max but overall you can get away with rank two do is fly around the area it's a really weird route out of all of the routes on this map so I'd highly recommend just picking the route from worth it as that's already pre-done for you. you all you have to do is follow it 
But overall, what you'd be wanting to do is fly around the zone, pick up the fox flower, and you have a chance, and you can get a decent amount of gold for your time. As legion-based herbs at this moment in time, on average, have gone up over the region's uh, values. So I would highly recommend checking this farm back out again, like a revisit to this farm. As in legion, it was a very high-based farm for gold per hour, but even now it's still a relatively good gold per hour. It's like one of the best out of all of the, and overall it's just definitely a farm worth checking out. The same can be said as well for number 29 with Fjans Gaggle, and that is time. Basically rank two or rank three, rank two at the bare minimum, same-esque thing. I would highly recommend just getting the route from Worth It as it's already done for you. But overall, what you'd be wanting to do is fly around the outskirts of the area, picking up all of the Fjans Gaggle, which is just everywhere. It's quite abundant, actually. Um, overall, you'll be getting a high gold per hour for this. And this one sells primarily the fastest out of all of them, bar one. But overall, Fjans Gaggle, if you want a faster selling material with a decent gold per hour, Fjans Gaggle is for you, especially for a Legion based farm. That being said, we're going to stick with Legion for one more farm, and that is at number 30, and that, is, and that comes as a mining farm for Fell Slate. What you're going to be wanting to do is follow the river around Suramal and mine all of the nodes. This is where you'll get a load of Laystone Ore, as well as your keynote item, Fell Slate. Make sure that you've got your ranks already in this, in order to maximise the amount of gold per hour you're actually getting. But overall, this is generally a decent farm. If you want a reliable farm in gold per hour, the fell, the fell slate farm is definitely a good mining farm. If you just want to do this with next to no competition for this farm, it's just generally, if you are finding a lot of competition with a load of other farms that you're trying to do, this farm is just definitely for you. As the materials sell relatively fast, good gold per hour, and the competition is quite low, like there's hardly anyone, and I farm this for like three to four hours, nearly four hours, let's just be honest, and um, <clears throat> came across no competition whatsoever when I was doing the footage for this video, <laughs> even though this the footage is quite short for these farms, I did pretty much quite a lot of farming for this video. That being said, let's jump over to our next one at number 31, and that is in Outland for the Fell Iron Ore. What you're going to be wanting to do is go over to Hellfire Peninsula, farm around the outside of the actual area. You can go through the centre of the area, but I tend to not, just to keep it more simplistic, by just going around the outskirts of the area. You generally get a hefty amount of fell iron ore and as we well know fell iron ore sells for a hefty amount of gold as for a bc-esque material as adamantite ore doesn't really sell all that well when it comes to what's gold per hour you're mainly going here for fell iron ore so if you're wanting to get a high gold per hour with a moderate sell rate as it takes a little bit more time to sell this farm is definitely for you if you are going for that high gold per hour for a BC-esque farm. The funny thing is, however, I've noticed that the competition for this farm is quite low at the moment and overall it's definitely a farm worth checking out once again. Like when I was farming this up for the footage for this video, I just found this one to be just in general a really good farm and I've been doing it even after I've gathered my footage because it's just been rewarding me with so much gold I just if something's working and it's working really well you're not gonna stop doing it are you so yeah I'm just keep farming fell iron ore that being said let's jump over to our next one at number 32 which is exotic leather this comes from the farm of Isle of Giants and this is a skinning based farm what you're going to be wanting to do is make your way over to the Isle of Giants off of Kunlai Summit in Pandaria. What you're going to be wanting to do here is you'll be running around the entire zone in a circle fashion as this will, once you've got completed your loop, the mobs will have reset and respawned, so to speak. And this will provide you with a lot of exotic leather, especially when you're killing those packs of dinosaurs over and over again, it really does add up. The thing of note for this farm is you can also get Magnificent Hide from your skinning, but also 
you get a lot of giant dinosaur bones increasing your gold per hour which is just a general item anyone can get from this and overall the gold per hour for this is generally quite well well and good paired with your skinning and overall if you are wanting to get a decent gold per hour to sell in the auction house and a reliable farm this is definitely something you should be doing I generally find that this farm is a good go-to for yourself to even in order to actually get some decent gold if you're a skinner and also to along with that you can also get an item which is unique called the primal egg this hatches within three days and provides you with a primal raptor mount and overall that's quite cool you get a mount even if you didn't have it already this is definitely something you should be doing because you get a mount and you get gold it's like a win-win in that sense so that being said let's move over to our next one at number three and number 33 is the Eternium ore farm this is located within Terracar forest and overall it's definitely one of the best gold farms for mining this is primarily where you'll be wanting to go on the outside of the Terracar forest and overall you're going to get a decent gold per hour for your time invested. I generally find that this is the best mining farm you can do in the whole of Outland and if you want fast reliable gold you can get a load of adamantite, fell iron ore, eternium and even corium ore which is a key note item if I do say so myself. You want decent gold this farm is definitely something you should be checking out for your time invested. However, the competition on this farming location is a little bit higher than usual, but overall, it's definitely well worth your time even with competition. Tailgate the other miner and both of you will win in the long run when it comes towards your mining. That being said, I would highly recommend pairing this with Dark Moon Firewater as this will bring a load of decent types of gold, as this will increase your gathering speed and just in general increase the amount of gold you're going to be getting for this farm. That being said, let's move over to our next one at number 34, and that is the Elementium Ore Farm in Aldham. What you're gonna be wanting to do is just go around the top hand side of the map. You just follow the mountains at the top of Aldham and then just go back and forth, back and forth. This will provide you with a lot of elementium ore, volatile water, volatile fire, and also volatile earth. This provides you with a lot of volatiles as well as pyrite ore, which is one of the keener items for you in order to actually sell the auction house. I generally find this, this farm is just in general one of the best material farms as elementium and pyrite ore sell relatively fast, especially with the volatiles. And overall, it just generally goes for a decent chunk of gold if you want some decent gold relatively fast and a decent gold per hour then this farm is something to check out generally recommend this to a newbie when it comes towards gold making and overall it would go hand in hand quite well with the whiptail farm as you can follow the river then cut across to get to the other side of the river by mining as a multi farm and that's how I usually tend to do it with my druid who is a miner and a herbalist so I'd highly recommend doing that as well as just upright farming. Being said, let's move over to our next one at number 35, which is another rogue specific farm, and that is for the Dwarven Dice. This is located within Ice Crown, and what you're gonna be wanting to do is go to the far left-hand side of the map, or top left-hand side. This is where you'll be wanting to go to the Scarlet, the Scarlet Onslaught base, which is like a massive chapel in the middle of the ocean. Here is where you'll want to bring your rogue and pickpocket, much like with the loaded gnomish dice and also with the Horgarth's Landing in Ice Crown as well. You'll be wanting to just pickpocket all of those mobs. This one gives you the, the dice which tends to go for the most amount of gold, and that is the Dwarven dice. This one has a pretty low drop chance in order to drop, so I would highly recommend weighing up the pros and cons for you as the RNG is quite high on it so it's whether or not you want to do this but overall the sell rate is quite low as well but the reason why it's actually on this list is even though those factors are quite low the gold for it is usually insanely a lot higher than most others and I'd generally go for this if I wanted to get a massive sale all in one go 
and overall I like to have two of every dice on the auction house so yeah we generally want to get some high-end yields for our time invested so let's move over to our next one at number 36 which is the dredged leather farm which is also a skinning farm it is one of the farms that you will need to have your ranks up in bfa for obviously dredged leather as well as all of the other different types of things when you're actually farming this as this will make sure as this will provide you with more gold per hour of course and overall this is something you definitely want as the keynote items are bloodstained bones and dredged leather that's where it derives its value questionable meat you get from this you can usually just vendor as they just don't sell anymore but overall if you are wanting to get a decent gold per hour for yourself then dredged leather farming is definitely for you especially as this requires you to have the ends of invasions already active so you'll need to go into that version of the veil of eternal blossoms which is in pandaria and you'll need to speak to the time walker near the law walkers to turn it into the ends of invasion if you don't have that already active already that being said, let's jump over to one of my most favourite farms at number 37, and that is the Dreamleaf Farm. This is located in the Dark Heart Thicket. This takes about 30 minutes in order to do, and what you're going to be wanting to do is run into the instance, gather up all of the mobs. This is primarily the Lashers. You'll be wanting to burn down these mobs. Primarily, you'll want to have rank 2 and rank 3 in order to actually rank to get the most dreamly for your time and what i found as well is if you have the dark moon fire water on it's like an instant loot for the dream leaf which increases your time just fyi i would recommend doing this farm due to the fact that you can do it in about half an hour if you are on a druid you can dream walk in and out really easily as it just takes you in and out of the instance so fast um and in 30 minutes you can usually get more than what you would if you were farming in the open world for Dreamleaf. It's just generally one of the best gold farms in Legion. I digress, it's actually one of the best gold farms in Legion and it is one of the highest competitors just in general for gold per hour and fast sales as well in the material space for farming. That being said, that is the Dreamleaf farm at number 37. So let's jump over to number 38 for the Devil Saw Leather. Farming Devil Saw Leather is a easy farm in order to do. What you'll be wanting to do is go over to Ungoro Crater. You want to go over to the Queen Devil Saw, which is on the western side of the map. She will just be standing there on her nest, and quite rightfully so, she's just doing her dino thing. And you'll want to take your skinner. You want to put Dartmoor Firewater on, of course. You don't really need to, but it will really generally help just a little bit more. But overall, you're taking advantage of the respawn timer of that quest mob. This is because the Queen Devil Saw has to be up quite a bit as it's used for a quest. And overall, she has a 30 second respawn timer. This means that you can get Devil Saw, one Devil Saw every 30 seconds, and you just stand there and do basically an AFK farm. You can get so much Devil of Soul Leather in such a short amount of time, and the gold per hour on this is moderately okay, The, but overall, it's just generally a great AFK farm in order to get high value items that can sell moderately well on the auction house. So if you were wanting to do a low effort farm, the Devil of Soul Leather farm is definitely for you. But if you were wanting to take a Skinner and go over to a pretty much a higher end one for faster sales. Then we'll jump over to number 39 for the desolate leather farm in Bastion. What you're gonna be wanting to do is take up the sky feathers and they are located in Bastion, of course. This is generally in the starting area. And what you would have wanted to do is gather up all those mobs, burn them down, skin them real fast. I recommend using a demon hunter in vengeance mode as when you're 60 some of them hit a little bit harder than most and overall I find that this is the best way in order to do because I can just gather up all those mobs I literally have no chance of dying and I can just kill more and more in that time span and that means I can skin more this pairs quite nicely with the enchant for Shadowlands skinning just to increase my gathering speed and that means I can skin them a lot faster increasing my gold per hour 
failing that you can use the dark moon fire water potion but overall you don't really need to as you've got the enchant and you can just enchant that to your shadowlands gloves overall this sells relatively fast because it's desolate leather it's the keynote item for shadowlands and the gold per hour for it is moderately good Overall, if you just wanted to blast through it and just get a ton of gold in a decent amount of time, this farm is definitely for you if you are a skinner. If you aren't really concerned with a high, high gold per hour, you're just looking for a, just an okay farm for gold making, this is definitely well worth your time as the returns on your farm is typically one of the fastest as its current content is always king and i think i mentioned that so many times in this video but it's, it, it generally is the case so that being said let's move jump over to our next one at number 40 which is the dark iron ore farm this is where you'll be wanting to go into the raid of the molten core do not kill any of the bosses what you'll be wanting to do is run in as a miner and mine all of the dark iron ore deposits. This has a chance of giving you blood of the mountain as well as dark iron ore, which sell for a decent amount of gold. And when you're running around this actual dark raid, I would highly recommend checking out and seeing if there are any molten destroyers up just as trash mobs. These have a chance of dropping the blood of the mountain as well which can be paired alongside the dark iron ore farm increasing your gold per hour for you farming in general overall this is a great farm in order to do and once you've completed one lap of the area just reset the instant and jump back in overall your gold per hour for this farm is generally pretty dang high the sell rate on these are moderately okay to be honest and overall it's just in essence just a nice farm as you don't have any competition when you're farming as it's an instance raid so that means you can farm as much as you want whenever you want and you can still get a decent amount of gold for that that being said let's jump over to our next one at number 41 which is an open world farm and that is the crystal infused leather farm in the blades edge mountains this is located in outland and overall you'll be wanting to bring a skinner of course what you're going to be wanting to do is take out all of the boars and the mana rays in the area. They can drop a load of fell scales as well as a load of leather and also the keynote item of this farm, the crystal infused leather. All of these materials sell for a decent amount of gold and overall it's just in general a decent farm in order to do as there's next to no competition for this majority of the time you'll find this area completely abandoned as it is in outland and the majority of those types of zones are rarely farmed anymore so overall if you're wanting next to no competition for an okay amount of gold then the crystal infused leather farm is definitely for you but staying with outland for a second let's move over to number 42 for the cobra scales farm which is sometimes competitive depending if it's been in circulation um, on the interwebs or something to that effect overall the cobra scale farm is a farm in which you're mainly going for the cobras in their grand what you'll be wanting to do is go to the western side of the map where you'll find a nice little legion base type thing just before there there's a little cave in which you'll be farming up all of these cobras and overall you'll be coming there for not hide leather and also cobra scales these sell for generally for a decent chunk of gold and are used for a load of high-end transmog items so they sell relatively well and overall if you are wanting something just a little bit different from the average gold farm this is something i would check out i generally think that this one is a bit more fun than just running around in a circle for an hour i like the types of farms that keep you a little bit more active so overall i generally like this farm so that being said let's move over to our next one at number 43 which is the cobalt ore farm for in the borean tundra this is a farm that i would highly recommend actually doing and that is because the borean tundra is just in general uh rarely farmed up it drops the nodes for the cobalt ore are quite scattered around so you will be flying around in a quite wide area before you find a node for the cobalt ore but the price is usually reflective of this cobalt ore farming is usually tends to go quite high as it's used to make things like the mechanized chopper when it's in cobalt bar form for the cobalt bolts 
and overall cobalt ore just tends to have a gold, high gold per hour especially for just any form of material it's just in general if you are wanting something a bit different than the ordinary like our last one then i definitely check this one out it's something i would generally check out if you are wanting something a bit different than normal at number 44 at no surprise is the coarse leather farming which is another skinning farm within drust farm what you're going to be wanting to go towards is you want to go over to that rare in drust farm for the boars this is because the boars have to always have a couple up at any one given time so if you go around in a circle you can just burn down all those mobs, get a load of coarse leather, and you always have mobs at one point. This is easy to get to, as well as if you are running yourself, even as a vengeance demon hunter, as for me, I did this as that. I could pull more mobs at any one given time, burn them down, skin them, get a load of coarse leather, as it's been increasing in price lately. Definitely worth checking out on your server to see if it's worth farming up. I'd highly recommend doing this farm as this just provides you with a load of coarse leather and Liz did not nerf this one. Uh, thank God. Um, this one is definitely something ch worth checking out if you're a skinner as the price of coarse leather has been going up and in general this farm has just been getting better and better every single month ever since Shadowlands release even though it is a BFA farm. That being said let's move over to our herbalism farm at number 45 and that is the Cinder Bloom farm. Of course, we're going for Cinderbloom in Mount Haijal, and what you'll be wanting to do is just basically follow the route, just going around in a nice triangular-esque shape fashion around the area. What you'll be wanting to do here is, primarily if you wanted to get the route, I would always recommend just going into Worth It, as all of the routes are already in there, it's just ease of use. And overall, Cinderbloom sells relatively well as it's used for a load of variety of different types of crafts but more prevalently than not it is mainly used to make potions of treasure finding for other gold makers as well. Overall I tend to find that this is a great farm in order to actually do as not many people farm up Cinderbloom as they find it a bit tedious but overall I tend to find it to be quite great when it comes towards multi-farming for obsidian ore as well. So I'd highly recommend checking that one out if you are wanting to try something quite nice that has no comp next to no competition. With that being said, we'll jump over to our next one at number 46 and that is the battered hilt farm for the pit of saron this one's located in ice crown and you'll want to set your dungeon to heroic mode what you'll be wanting to do is go into the dungeon and kill all of the trash mobs at the beginning of the actual instance do not kill any of the bosses and once you actually burn those down you have a chance of getting the battered hilt which is a high keynote item for gold per hour However, I would actually run your character as a tailor and an enchanter. This is because you have your extreme scavenging thing for additional cloth, which you can turn into braces or sell that flat on the auction house, whatever you so wish. And also with the greens, you can either use that for transmog farming or I like to just disenchant them as I find I get more gold for disenchanting them into infinite dust. This is because you get so much greens when you're actually doing this farm, you might as well increase the amount of gold you're getting for yourself. So I usually turn the cloth into braces, disenchant it, as well as disenchant any of the greens, blues and epics that I guess you get from this as well as sell my battered hilts on the auction house as well, giving me a nice regular gold income when it comes towards this farm. I just generally think it's one of the best, hence why I put it so high up on this list. But no matter what that farm may bring, there's always one better, and that is the Azara's Vale farm at number 47. This one is located within Vashir in the Abyssal Depths, and what you're gonna be wanting to do is go around that area. This goes right next to the Poseidus spawn location, so you can do this in tandem. So you could do a five minute lap of all of the spawn locations for Poseidus, then do an hour's worth of Azura's Veil farming. This also is paired with the Obsidian Ore Farm, so it's pretty much the same route. So if you want to do it as a multi-farm, you'll get more gold per hour. Especially if you do it as a Druid, you'll get even more materials as you're swimming faster. Paired with that, with Dartmoor Firewater makes it one of the best gold farms that you can do for gold. Overall, it just generally has no competition 
It's got a wide variety of things that you can get from this area. So Reigns of Poseidus, if the rare spawns in your location, you get a load of Ajara's Veil, you get a load of Volatiles, a load of Obsidian. It just, in general, is one of the best farms that you can possibly be doing. The gold per hour for this is generally quite high, uh, but overall it take, it sells in a moderately-esque fashion as it's used for the Ajara's Veil, is used for the Vile of the Sands craft especially for the flasks for that. That being said, let's just jump over to our next one at number 48, and that is the Arcane Crystal Farm, which is located in Silithus. Now, generally, if I wanted to go for a reliable farm, I will always take my miner over to Silithus. This is because all you have to do is fly around in a circle for an hour, and you're farming thorium ore. This is primarily not for thorium ore, where it is nice to get that ore and turn it into imperial plate stuff and sell those transmog items. But aside from that, the main thing you're going for is your arcane crystals you get from the deposits. These arcane crystals are used with thorium ore to make arcanite bars to sell on the auction house. So if you've got an alchemist as well, this is generally well worth your time in order to pair this, especially with a transmutation master. But overall, if you generally want to just get a high gold per hour, arcane crystal farming is one of the best as they tend to sell for a decent chunk of gold overall. And on average, just go for a decent chunk as well as have a moderately good sell rate. So if you are wanting to have a decent gold per hour for yourself, this is the farm for you. Aside from that, let's move on to our next one at number 49, which is within Deep Home. This is a fishing based farm and this is of course the albino cave fish farm. This fish goes for a stupid amount of gold, especially when it comes to in regards to gold per hour. And what you're gonna be wanting to do is go over to northwest of the actual area and on the top of one of the plateaus is a load of water. Here is where you'll be able to farm up nodes or schools of fish of albino cave fish which can provide you with either A, albino cave fish, or B, volatile water. Either one of those sell really, relatively well. Obviously, volatiles sell faster than anything else in Cataclysm, but albino cave fish can be also turned into deep stone oil for the vial of the sand craft. I will generally farm up albino cave fish as, a, as they are so high priced on my server and most other servers that it's just easier to farm it up and then make your gold from the rest. So overall, if you're wanting to get a decent gold per hour for yourself, it's definitely well worth your time just farming up some albino cave fish. Bringing us on to our last farm at number 50 for this video. Thank God I shouldn't make videos this long, but the, uh, but overall one farm that I think is super underrated and that is the ethereal farm in Asuna. You generally want to have rank two or rank three on your ethereal and you'll be wanting to do this as a herbalism character. Just fly around the area in a nice loop-esque fashion, you'll be able to get a load of ethereal all in all. This sells relatively fast as well as has one amazing gold per hour in general, especially for a legion based farm. And overall, it's just in general a decent gold farm in order to do. That being said guys, that is pretty much my pick for the 50 best gold farms that you can do right now. This has been a very long video. I probably won't do a video this long ever again. It's like been stupidly long. But other than that guys, have a wonderful rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be soon.